subscribe. Hi everybody and welcome. My name's Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. Today is a video on the top tips um, for producing a really nice tone on your violin. Um, now, when I was going through a few points on this um, and I was um, doing a little bit of research on the internet um, to, to get some more ideas to help you out with, um, it was going in, some of them were going into quite a lot of depth, but this isn't going to be a video for advanced players. This is just going to be a kind of a, a sort of a lower end kind of how to produce the best tone if you're a beginner violin. So there are other ways of producing a, a tone if you are a more advanced player, but I'm really not going to be aiming at the advanced player. I'm, I'm kind of aiming at the, the beginner violin who really needs to know how to get a good tone out of the violin. Maybe it's scratchy or maybe they're not getting a nice smooth sound and, and this that, and the other. So this is going to be for you guys out there to help you, especially if you've just started out playing the violin. So um, right, number one, um, I suggest that you start by playing with a flat bow. Now, you might have seen me or other professional players, they play with a tilted bow, but I would suggest probably to start with that you actually play with a flat bow rather than tilting it. Play with a flat bow because you get a much better sound. It helps you with the angle of the hand and it helps, it just helps with, every, with everything else. Rather than trying to do an advanced technique and play tilted, you can do all of that when you don't actually have to think about the hands and the fingers and what the bow is doing and, and all that kind of thing. So if you if you play with a flat bow, you will get a much better tone to start with if you're a beginner, because obviously the more, the, the if you're playing with a flat bow, then you've got more hair on contact with the string. If you're tilting it slightly, then you're only using one side of the hair as opposed to the other side. <laughs> if you play try and play with a flat bow you won't have to think about all the other things if you tilt the bow then you're going to have to think of a new position for the the, the fingers are going to change ever so slightly so to uncomplicate that for your bow hold sake I would suggest that you play with a flat tone and you will produce oh, sorry with a flat bow and you will produce the best tone that you possibly can for the stage you're at at the moment um, producing a nice tone as well. I suppose this is in combination with playing with a fat, flat bow, but you can always use a little bit of vibrato because that can give you, I suppose that changes the sound more than the tone. But if you were just playing something open string, it could be a little bit plain just without using vibrato. So I'm going to use a flat bow as well. Apart from the open string there, I can't do vibrato on that. But the other notes, if you can do vibrato, I've done videos on vibrato, so you can search for them. But if you've, um, if you can add vibrato and it will, it, it will change the sound that's coming out after you've made contact with the bow. So I suppose that does come under tone, but it'll give you a nice, everybody knows that vibrato will give you a nice sound to the notes that you're playing anyway. So if you can put vibrato in, then that's, that's going to be good. Bowing too much on the fingerboard and bowing too close to the bridge is not going to give you a nice tone. So you need to bow, you need to make sure that you're actually bowing in the middle between the bridge and the fingerboard. So not close to the bridge, not on the fingerboard, but in the middle. If you bow to, if you bow on the fingerboard, you can probably see that I do actually have rosin on the fingerboard. It's not because I've unintentionally not been looking and I have been bowing on the fingerboard. I bow nearer the fingerboard when I want to soften out the tone a little bit and I want to bring the dynamic range of the piece down. So you can always use that to bow, you can always bow on the fingerboard and use that if you want to create a softer tone depending on, on what you're doing. So it's not because my bow has been waving about, it's because I've purposefully been bowing there. So you'll get a softer, more kind of, not really muted, but you'll, you, you, you'll, you'll just get a softer, less confident kind of sounded tone if you bow near the fingerboard. I don't know how much of that's coming out on camera, but... So this is your point of contact between the bridge and the fingerboard there, and this is when you, where you're going to get the most out of it. If you're bowing too close to the bridge, um, my ears don't like it when it bows close to the bridge because it makes my teeth go on edge. But if you're hearing that that kind of scratchy sound, it's probably because you're playing too close to the bridge and you'll get this sort of sound. That's about as much as 
as I can take from that. So if, if it's sounding a bit scratchy and not that nice, it's again, it's probably because you're, you're bowing too close to the bridge. So you need to go where the point of contact is. So you need to go between the middle, between the bridge and the fingerboard. And that's where you need to try and, and bow there. And that's where you'll get the nicest sound from that. Um, make sure that you depress your, your fingers fully on the bow. So you don't want half of the pad of your finger on, on a, sorry, I meant to say strings there, not, not bow. Make sure you fully depress your fingers on the string there. So you haven't got half the, the pad of your finger on the string or make sure that the middle of the pad or the middle of your finger goes directly on the string and that you're pressing it enough. You don't have to press so much that you're trying to, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to push through to the other side of the fingerboard, but just make sure it's depressed in enough so that you get a nice, good quality sound there. If your fingers are sort of hovering over the strings, that means you're going to get a, a, a shaky sound or a thinner sound. So even though I'm bowing in the middle, if I lift my finger off slightly, then I'm gonna get that kind of horrible scratchy sound. So make sure that your fingers are, are pushed in enough. More so when you go higher up the fingerboard as well, you need to make sure, you need to work more on tone there. So you're, the higher up the violin, the sort of softer the tone goes. So that's quite nice if you want to create different effects and things, but it also means that you have to work much harder at producing that nicer sound. So everything I've told you so far about the tone is nice to apply for first position, but you're gonna to have to work even harder at that when you're up in kind of third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and you know, behind the rafters kind of position. So, so I must admit when I bow in, when I play in, in third, fourth, whatever position I want to be in, anything higher than sort of third position, I guess, then I do make sure that my fingers are fully down on the string. I make sure that the kind of the middle pad or the most of my finger is is fully down on the string. It's not half on the string or half off the string. It's it's completely down on the string. I like to bow nicely in the middle uh, between the bridge and the fingerboard. And I do sort of push ever so slightly harder, not so much that I'm getting that scratch out of it, but just a little bit more, just to reinforce the fact that I'm going to lose a little bit of tone the higher up I go. So I make sure that my fingers are fully in the right place um, on the string. I'm not talking intonation wise, whether you want to be a, an F sharp or a C sharp or anything like that. I'm talking about, but your actual, I'm talking about your actual finger being pushed into the, the string enough. And I just, I just make sure that my, my bow arm is working a little bit more just to make sure I get a nicer tone, but not too much so that you get that scratch just, just enough. It's just something that you have to experiment with because your arm is going to be completely different to mine. So what I do might be slightly different to you, but as long as we're working on the same format there. Um, another way to make sure that you get nice tone is to use nice, long, um, sustained open bow. So rather than nice long open bow there so you do get a nice kind of big open sort of sound and, and it gives you the chance to it gives you the chance to have a nicer sound for longer because you are using more of an open bow there so or using longer bows even if the notes are very short you can still use longer bows rather than your arm a bit quicker but you're using more of the bow so that's going to give you a much larger so uh not much much larger sound there so i can't speak today um okay um another top tip for improving the tone is actually having a nice violin um there is to be honest with you there is only so much you can do with a student quality violin i couldn't use a student quality violin for the for, for the performances i'm doing at the moment because my techniques are way more advanced than the actual violin itself. Think of it as grades. The violin is a grade one and I'm playing a, a, a grade eight, for example. So the violin is just way, way, way beneath the technique I'm playing at. And even though I'm applying those, those techniques, I'm just not gonna be able to squeeze enough out of it because the violin isn't gonna be able to, to respond to what I'm doing nicely enough. So having a really nice violin as well does help you with the tone. Obviously that depends on your, your finances and things and you know if whether you're gonna keep up the violin um, going on into the future and things, but 
you know it is true what they say you get what you'll pay for um, but having a nice violin will help you to get a nicer tone that just makes sense um, I suppose the last top tip for it is to the last top tip for improving the tone is to play with your violin not against it so what I mean is that go with how the violin works go with what it's doing rather than trying to force something out of it so you know if, if this violin is is really nice and it's this this violin is quite a loud violin I bought it because I wanted more of a solo instrument rather than something that blends in with an orchestra if I was going to play this for an orchestra it might have too much of a um, I suppose uh, too much of a solo sound so it would it would be like um, when they have when you have backing singers um, you know when when Adele sings or whoever when when the pop stars sing on TV they have backing singers you never really want a singer with a harsh kind of um, voice that everybody's going to hear you want a nice backing singer that's going to blend in quite nicely so I, I chose this and I bought this purposefully because I wanted a nice solo instrument so you know if, if this if this plays really well up here in this area on the A and D string then I'm going to go with that I'm not going to try and force something else out of it that's not going to work it's you know it's just I suppose it's it's just choosing a uh, just choosing a car for your preference you're going to get a car that does nine times out of ten things that you want it to do but there's always going to be one thing that it's not going to be able to do so you know it's you have to sort of compromise on things you won't get one size that fits all if you do get a violin that, that does everything then the whole tone quality in a whole might not be quite so nice so you know just I suppose it's an odd one but just play with the violin go with the violin if you think that your violin isn't isn't doing what what you want to do and it's becoming frustrating and you've got the technique there but it just won't do what you want it to do maybe it's time that you need to think about moving on and getting a better violin that will do the things that you want it to do and honestly when you start when you start going to a violin dealer and you start playing violins you will soon quickly find that there are much nicer violins out there that will respond to the level you're at at the moment even if you need to buy a violin now to get you through and then buy another one you know it's it's completely up to you but um but yeah so I hope that's uh, that's that's helped you it's just a, a quick kind of whistle stop tour of um how to how to get a nicer tone out of your violin like I say this is for for the beginners out there to help you when you're starting off in your violin playing so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time subscribe